Hello and thank you for joining me. We are today going to colour this uh, watercolour wreath with the hand lettering in as well. So we're going to start by drawing a circle. Now this may be around something. I've got a really handy circle template that I've had for years and I'm just going about a centimetre in from the edge of my watercolour cardstock there. And that's around about 8 by 8 inches. Now I'm going to use some masking fluid. Um, this is a white masking fluid so it won't, um, well, it shouldn't mark my paper, but my brush has a little bit of paint or ink on from a previous project. It obviously wasn't washed properly. So as you'll see in a moment, when I pop the masking fluid down on the outside of that circle, it's starting to turn pink. So that excess ink has colored my masking fluid. Unfortunately, this will stain the paper, but we will do a fix for this later. So go around the entire circle with the masking fluid, allow that to dry for a few moments. Now we're coming in with some concentrated paint here, really concentrated, this is a brown colour and I've only got water on my second brush there. Now the water is going to pull that concentrated ink out from the centre so we're just touching the very very tip of the paintbrush into the paint with the water on the brush and that's going to bleed into the water giving us some beautiful translucent style petals. Now I always think any watercolour flower looks 10 times better once it's dried so don't worry about trying to edit these petals, try to leave them as natural as possible. But as you'll see there on the right, the ones that have dried look absolutely beautiful and I love how the colour often gathers around the edge. So what we're looking for is the darker centre but a little bit of colour fading into the petals. So you can just see we're just really just touching the very centre with the tip of a rounded and pointed watercolour brush there. And then we're kind of just letting uh, the water and the paint do its thing itself. So I'm just going to work around the edge inside of the masking fluid spacing out the flower centers you can see the water i'm using there is a muddy water it's a little bit got a little bit of brown in a little bit of blue as well to give us that uh, creamy ivory color it's extremely pale you you'll hardly see it um, but it will give us like i say that translucent very very delicate look to a petal so just working around don't worry if you accidentally touch too much of the brown don't worry if your petals at the sides touch each other it happens and, and flowers are completely natural so um, we don't want them to be too perfect all the time so just working around I've just sped this up for you now so the uh, centers I put down first I put two, two usually at a time down it doesn't matter if the centers have dried slightly uh, you'll reactivate them when you touch them with the wet brush and actually sometimes this can be a little bit easier to work with if you're new to this technique um, it gives you a little bit of time um, and you'll need to touch the centers a little bit more so um, sometimes it's a little bit easier so as you can see just going around keeping them reasonably spaced out but not perfect I've got a few bigger gaps some that are almost touching there as well so now we're going in with some blue flowers and we're going to dot the centers again. Again, this is really irregular, just some really concentrated paint. And then using, um, once I've put a couple of these centers down, we're going to use a wet paintbrush. Again, I'm using a small rounded and pointed watercolor brush. So I've got a very, very pale watered down uh, paint on my brush now. It's almost just a little bit of colored water. Again, I'm just touching the tip and I'm dragging outwards this time, um, but just in one line. So one thin line and lifting up quite quickly as well. So we're not spraying the bristles out this time. So we're just touching and dragging like so. This is going to be almost a star shaped flower here with the pointed petals. And we'll have a look at that really close up. So you can just see that point of the brush touches the ink and drags it out into a point it's really actually quite mesmerizing to watch and one of my favorite parts of watercolor painting you could see there actually uh, as the watercolor hit the masking fluid how it just sits on it, it resists it so don't worry about going over the edge in fact I'd encourage you to go over the edge of the masking fluid a little bit to make sure you get it right up to the very edge of your frame there once you've removed your masking fluid and you can go over previous petals as well once the uh, paint has dried 
um, that's absolutely fine. You'll get a nice translucent look. You'll get the, the look through the blue and you'll just see those cream petals underneath as well. So it will really well look like real flowers. You can see that paint just bleeding out into the water there really nicely. And that's what that looks like when that's almost dry. So just working around the frame here, I've sped this up for you again so you can see how I space the flowers out, going in some of the gaps, leaving a couple of larger gaps as well. Uh, nothing more than about my thumb width there. So now we're looking at leaves and fillers really to go around our flowers. So using the same brush again, pointed, rounded, um, I'm using the pointed area to do a very thin stem. And then I'm using the wider area, so I'm pressing down on the paintbrush on two sides to create a leaf shape. Really, really simple technique for beautiful leaves. So you just press down hard in the center for the, of the leaf and then you lift up at the end for the pointed end. And I like to make these quite loose as well. There may be a gap between the two strokes of the leaf uh, there may not be there may be um, that one stops shorter than the other again that's absolutely fine so just filling in working around going over my flowers here uh, and you can see at the bottom there where the leaves have overlapped the pale flowers and you've got you can see through each of them so now i'm taking another color so this is a darker brown i'm going to do a similar effect but just using the tip of my brush here to create little loose um, leaves on a thin stem again. Now what I noticed when I was doing this is that some areas I did put down a little bit too much paint so uh, I don't know if you very quickly saw that I just used a little bit of kitchen towel and pressed it onto uh, those leaves. So again another variation of the same sort of leaf here with the blue just to tie in with those blue flowers working around going into any gaps that I've got um, and you've got two or three different leaf shapes there. So here's just another example of a long leaf that I'm doing. Another pressing the brush down to get the wider part and lifting up at the end. But I'm making these long and thin here. So like I say, just another variation of leaf that you can be doing to fill out your space. And these come a little bit further into the middle of the wreath. But I've used a lighter colour for these just so that they're not too intrusive because they come so far in. Blotting off any excess water there, anything that hasn't dried and any really dark ink that I didn't want. And then peeling off the masking fluid, which is usually my favorite part. So you can see that pink there underneath um, the, water, the masking fluid. So that pink there, we're going to fix that. So that's absolutely fine. So I'm going to cover the entire outer area with water. I've made sure my flowers and my leaves are completely dry now. So just going around with a clean, reasonably clean water, maybe the one you've been using, it's fine, uh, and dampen everything. I actually went around twice because the paper sucks up so much water the first time. Go around the second time and it will sit there. And then I'm just using a blue ink and touching it on the edge of the circle. And that will sit on only the wet areas. So it won't go into your flowers. I've gone around the whole circle there. And then what I've actually done after this stage, once um, I've gone around once, I have gone around with a slightly more concentrated blue as well. So then just a little bit of brush lettering. This is completely optional, but um, and nice to finish it off. I've used a Winsor & Newton gold calligraphy ink. It's so sparkly. I've penciled my wording in first, and then I'm going in with a very small brush um, painting in the thicker lines for the downstrokes, thinner lines for anything else there, um, adding a few swirls in and overlapping. I've gone around the edge of the frame in gold as well just to match and tie in beautifully with that gold writing and it all just sort of brings it together and makes it look cohesive. So just using the tip of the brush there for the swirls and the flourishes. So hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial. I'd love to see yours if you've had a go.